So, one of the top questions we get actually uh, is what tools we bring on the bus. And so behind me, we have laid out all the tools that we actually carry with us. And it seems like a lot, but I find that I have pretty much touched every single one of those tools in uh, the upkeep, repair, and upgrades of the bus. So come on, let's go check it out. Something's missing. <laughs> that would be you. <laughs> I'm the biggest tool. That's right. <laughs> okay, so categorically, um, I've cut, we've kind of broke this down into uh, kind of the categories that they're used for, more or less. But I want to start with mechanicing because lately that's what I've been using the most of. Wait, what are some of the different categories? So we have, uh, we have mechanicing, plumbing, DIY stuff, electrical, and uh, tires mainly. Oh, okay, cool. So. All right, so we're gonna go through all those? Yeah. Let's do it. So starting with mechanical. On a bus, um, I actually bought the Stanley set of tools over there. Honestly, I had all those tools, but I needed a way to keep them really organized. So I got the, that's the Stanley Smoke Black, like 96 piece or something like that. But in working on the bus, uh, suddenly I found that buses have way bigger uh, bolts and nuts. So uh, I ended up buying this set here that goes up to one and a quarter inch. I've used this one. That's the only one you've used? No, that's as big as I've used. Oh, up to that yeah. one. Okay, gotcha. So, and then I have three different crescent wrenches there. Uh, that half inch socket there uh, was something I already had before I got that and it ended up in the tool bag. Right next to it, that's like a, uh, a, how, oh, what's the word? Like a filter wrench, sort of. I could take this and stick this on here and put it around something. And it's adjustable, any one of these links could fit here. And I could put it around something and then tighten it. Oh. And that way I can get a grip on something and then I could turn okay, it. Okay, so. so that was the thing you just used in the video with the, that. Air cleaner, oh. or the, uh, the air dryer. Yeah, yeah, the air dryer. So we got that, uh, other mechanicing things. We have uh, a couple screwdrivers here. I mainly end up using this screwdriver for prying stuff and the occasional flathead. This one, uh, when I'm too lazy to go get my electric, because <laughs> I end up using that super a lot. And the drill, like I use it mechanicing, I use it for DIY, I use it for everything. Yeah, so. those guys are like stars of the show. Yeah, they get used constantly. And their batteries are constantly being charged. Yeah. And we tried to keep all of our uh, battery power tools uh, from the same type of battery. So I even bought this for our tire thing and got the same battery style for it. Doesn't our chainsaw have the same, same battery. battery too? Yep. But bigger? Mm-hmm. So that kind of takes us over to our next uh, section, kind of DIY. Oh, that was a whole nother category, wood tools. Oh yeah, wood tools, right. Okay, so say that again, sorry I interrupted you. So <laughs> I guess that kind of carries over a little bit because they overlap because you use them for everything, um, is the DIY section. That would also include all our little power tools and stuff, but that would include our circular saw, which is battery powered there. And that came in a set with those three. So we oh, have- Oh, the same battery goes on it too. Yeah, so we have the- the, the impact driver, the drill, and that circular saw came in a package together. Okay. I think if I bought those two, I got the circular saw for free. I do remember making fun of you for buying that. Right. <laughs> so then that brings us back over into this section here, uh, a little file, actually, and I have a flat file there. So I have my files for window screen stuff. Yeah, know, if we have to repair or replace right, a window staple screen. Staple gun, 
uh, just various tools. We have three hammers, but really we only have two. We have a sledge for beating up from something, this here for, for banging on different things, and this belongs to Jessica on Painted Buffalo Traveling Studio. We never run into her. We will see her again. <laughs> Give that back. <laughs> right. We also have uh, a little uh, Dremel tool because we is that do... what the big long thing is? The extension on the Dremel? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, it just has a little wand yeah. at the end so you can uh, guess, get in tight and it's easier I guess I to wasn't use. looking closely at what right. it was. We can uh, kind of roll into plumbing now because when we built the bus, I knew I was going to use some kind of PEX. And I just thought all PEX, it was just PEX, but it's not. And there's multiple varieties of PEX, three in particular. Two I can remember the name of. One is shark bite and one is Upanor. This is the Upanor style. And uh, in my research, um, there was multiple places online that I found plumbers talking about this and saying, basically, if you don't want any leaks and you don't want me to come back and tear your wall out, you should use this. So I like went that instead route. Of instead of shark bite, bite or the or other, the other the one. crimping style. Yeah. So I just, I, I listened to that and said, you know what? Like I, the last thing I want to do is tear out my walls in this thing. So that's why we went with this. Um, with that, we have our little PEX cutter here. Um, really, there's not much more to it. Like these two tools here will get you, and all the little connectors will get you all the way through the entire. All the plumbing All with the pecs. plumbing, yeah, yeah. It's, it's super easy, man. So that's that. Okay, so we've been through like kind of the multi-purpose tools. Right. The plumbing tools, and then this over here is more of the like mechanicing yeah. and multi-purpose tools. Okay. Right, so then we can fall into tire tools. Uh, when we did the tires, uh, the first, first tire we did, we had available to us an, an air impact driver, and it was a three quarter inch, and it was a beast. Like there was no one handing that thing. It was probably, it was heavy, 50, 60 pounds, really heavy. And so I went online and I found this. This was the cheapest one I could find because I'm just not gonna use it that much. But when I need it, it's what I want. And so this is a, this is a uh, impact driver. Uh, it'll go to like 600 pounds torque. Um, so it's not as good as a Milwaukee one, but it's a quarter of the price of a Mil Milwaukee one. And uh, then I got the two uh, bits that I needed for it. This one takes the lug nuts off, this takes the lug off. So that's handy. And then this here, I don't remember why this is here. Hmm. Have it, it's in the box. <laughs> <laughs> probably fit something I needed to fit on. I, you probably just can't remember what it fits yeah, at the moment. Yeah, it was probably some deep socket, gigantic yeah. bolt. Um, oh yeah, we did have to buy that for... What did we buy that for? Steering wheel? Oh yeah, it was for the steering wheel. You're right. It was for the steering wheel. Ding, then. ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's right. <laughs> uh, if you're going to change a tire yourself like I did, then you're going to want two of these. You can't do it with one. And so I just went and got the right ones. And I think I spent, uh, I don't know, $60. I don't remember. I think it was like $70 for the two of these or something like for that. For both of them? I, I don't, I think so. Oh, okay. So that's you not You have that to look bad. it up. Um, but at any rate, whatever the cost, you need two of them. So get two of them if you're going to do it. It is a lot of work. But, and the last thing we got was this here. And this is a torque wrench for... Uh, tires that big and we had to do it to 500 pounds for our tires so we needed something like that I just didn't want to take any chances and and I just you know you could take it to some shop and you don't even know if they torque them on or not and that was our first experience getting tires so I don't want my tires flying off you've seen those videos where the this rogue tires going down the highway <laughs> all by itself it's right. probably it's either because they weren't on tight enough or they were too tight and the, the lugs off. failed and they sheared and that thing went down the highway. So I don't want that to happen on my house. And so that's why we have this. It seems like overkill and we keep it on our roof storage because it's so huge, but it has this cool little thing. So, and it's, it worked perfect, perfect. So, and the last thing we have in the tire section is our giant bottle jack here. Um, this is a 20 ton beast. And uh, I wish this was longer to be honest with you. <laughs> Oh, it looks like it had an extension at one point and we just didn't have it. 
Um, but uh, this is this is big enough to actually jack the bus up. So, or jack up one wheel on the bus anyway. So we actually use that. Right next to that is our woodworking, our our, our wood harvesting tools, I should say. Um, this is like my bushcrafting axe, actually. This is not my, this is, I don't use this very much unless I'm making kindling. This is like ridiculous sharp, uh, shaving sharp. And um, it, this is a, this was probably like $220 axe. This is high end axe. This is like your prize, right? I do, there. I love this axe. It's my bushcrafting <laughs> axe. I love, someday I'll show you some videos of me bushcrafting and stuff. Um, this is the one we actually use for splitting because it's actually it has a splitting head on it and uh, originally we had a uh, like a cheap ace hardware collins axe for that and uh, it didn't have enough of this here to do the splitting and so it would just bury itself and it would just kind of pain in the butt so this one's heavier and with that and this really just does the job let me see the top of the head of that so people can see like how that's it gets wide because I guess that's a splitting axe, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not suggesting this is the best one in the world, but man, it sure works. So. I just didn't even know that there was like different axes for different purposes. I oh. just thought like all axes were the same yeah, until you tons taught of me. Them. Tons of them. <laughs> um, double bid axes and all sorts of stuff. And then we have our chainsaw here. And this is the DeWalt one. Um, I added this little thing onto it that you see there. And this allows me to, uh, when you already have pre-cut wood, we bought some pre-cut wood. And I went down to try to cut that and you can't hold it. And it had nothing to hold it. And so I, I was trying to come up with some way of cutting wood because it was impossible. Like it was so hard. And so what I did is we got this thing here and you take your piece of wood and put it in like this and then you, and then it holds it here and then you set set this down this is spinning this way it's kind of pulling towards it and you can just like literally lift the back end of this and it just cuts the wood really cool man. the wedge this is more for if i'm if we're out harvesting wood and if it's like a a tree that's like supported on both sides it's fallen and supported on both sides when you start cutting down to that wood the tree is going to go like this and the slot that you've cut is gonna pinch and it'll pinch your blade and you can get you can get your saw stuck that way so you take a wedge and you bang it down in there so it maintains that opening so you can finish the cut so really with like four tools that's all of our wood cutting needs yeah pretty much yeah it goes through it very well cool. and that kind of brings us to the uh, the electrical side of things so like it's kind of one of my hobbies on top of you know there was a ton of electrical work in the bus and so I brought a lot of the electrical tools electronic tools that I previously had uh, prior to going into the bus um, got some leftover wire stuff I'm also a ham radio operator uh, my call sign is uh, k1 ngz and so I'm nerdy like that so in pursuit of that hobby I use a lot of these tools pretty often so I got uh, a few different soldering irons here. I'll probably get rid of that one because I don't need it. Just just an extra? Yeah, I have that one there and then I have this one here. This is my more fine soldering components onto a PC board or something like that. And then that one's more for just like quick grab it and you know use it real quick. Um, this is actually an oscilloscope, measures uh, uh, like when you have AC voltage and I hook it up, it'll show this a sine wave. Okay, I can actually see that visualized for me. That's what this does. And uh, I've had that for years and years and years. No reason to get rid of it, so I brought it with me. It's ham radio stuff, right? Uh, I got a fluke meter here, super good. Definitely recommend those meters. Um, we have a carbon monoxide detector here, and I use this for uh, tuning. The diesel heaters and there's a lot of videos online and actually there wasn't a lot of videos online but uh there's a back end section in there's in the menus of your diesel heater where you can change the uh, fan speed and the uh the fuel flow and you want to adjust it so that 
at the high setting, you're at your lowest uh, carbon monoxide reading. And then you do that for the lowest setting too. And that means it's its most efficient burn. And that way you're not cleaning that thing out every year because of all the soot that builds up inside of it. Uh, this right here is actually, <laughs> this is a uh, uh, wire measuring tool for measuring lengths of wire. So I can actually hook this up to like coax cable. And uh, if it's a, on a big spool and I can tell you how much I have left it's from way back. Um, this is a toner set right here. So I could turn this on if it had a good battery, which it clearly doesn't. And then I could push this button, I could hook this up to a wire, and then I could find that wire in the bus somewhere. Okay, so it's pretty handy. Little, uh, you know, micro screwdriver set. Uh, this here, uh, highly recommend this if you're building a, a schoolie and you're gonna have 120 volts in your bus. You need to know if you've wired it correctly and if it's hot or not. This end here, I could put up near uh, a wire and see if it's hot without putting a meter on. I can just put it up here and it'll tell me, yeah, there's current in that wire. Um, this one I can plug it in and it'll tell me if the uh, if it's been wired correctly, if you have the transposed wires and stuff. And actually in building the, uh, when, when Painted Buffalo Traveling Studio, Jessica came over and we were uh, getting her hooked up with solar on her deck, solar panels and stuff like that. Um, I heard a scream and then her daughter came up to the house and says, Mike, my mom needs you. And so I go out there and she that thing just shocked me. And it was her actual, it was her electrical box, the, the breaker box itself. And we open it up and I'm looking, I went over all the wiring and it was all right. And uh, so then I started tracing it back and found that the, the house we were living in, the, in, the, in the shed where all the tools were, they actually had miswired the, the uh, plug that we were plugging her bus into. So I had to go in and change that around so it wouldn't shock her anymore. The hot wire was on the neutral side. They were back transposed. And so that was kind of a problem. That was crazy you were able to diagnose that. Like it that we had no while. idea that was wrong that whole time. That tool is what told me the story. Yeah, it's a great tool. So Anybody should have that. I got uh, a couple sets of wire strippers here. These are your more classical wire strippers. Pull these ones here, kind of pinch and do it for you. Just stick it in this little slot right here and go like that and it pinches it off. I've had these, this has a radio shack on it if it gives you an idea how long I've had those. Uh, this is a crimper tool. With the amount of crimping we actually did in the bus, having a real crimper tool versus one of those little crappy sets they make is totally worth it. This thing really crimps them really well. So you wanna do that. This is actually a, uh, a Cat5 connector maker. I just have had it for years for making uh, like the computer cables with a really big phone plug at the end. Cat5 cable, that's what this is for here. And then, oh, we forgot something. This here is, uh, what is this called? A fish tape, cable snake. Um, you could pull this out. It's just like this flexible flat uh, metal here, but um, it'll pull way out. And the idea is to fish this through a small area to another opening that you're trying to get a wire through. And then you hook wires up to that little hole right there. And then you pull this thing back. You just pull it all the way out and you can bring wires through something. You would use this like in conduit or something, but in the bus, um, after we had installed things and realized we needed to run wire again through areas that we could not possibly reach, this is what we used. And this was like awesome for that. So perfect tool for that. Yeah, we used that several times. What's in this little kit right here? Okay, this gets into uh, miscellaneous sort of um, and upgrades. So this is a, a cool tool. What this does, it's like a rivet you screw your thing on here, you open it up like this and you screw it on, and then you, you drill a hole in something, and the little thing you screw on, you stick in there, when you go like this, it crimps it. I'll show you, let me go get one real fast. So you'd stick this in the hole. This is a, this little piece here I just screwed on, like that. And they come in bags of lots and lots. And then you go like that.
if you see right here this little ridge that's created if you drill the hole about this size now it can't pull out gotcha. so it's kind of like a rivet in a sense and then you can unscrew this off of there and now this will stay in the middle and I actually use that on the lower lights uh, driving lights or off-road lights on the bumper I drill the hole I put one of these things in there and I threaded in the uh, lights right into this thing. Cool. Which works like a charm. So it's in the. So the reason I got this though was in the future because we're gonna have to redo the uh, deck on this bus. I am gonna use these to hold the decking material on. Okay. On every one, and that way, all of the uh, boards can be easily removed, but they're bolted on. Kind of a neat tool. Especially, but it's a cool tool. Some of the other tools we have, we have a, uh, a small clamp on vise uh, when we just need to hold something and, and, and you know, that needs to be held tight. We can clamp this to a, anything and hold it. And so, typical vise, but not a bench vise like by any means. Um, got a couple of tape measures here and this one here. I don't know, I, tape measures are like my catch from the rye, I gotta have them. <laughs> you have to have more than you need at all yeah. times. Um, I got a set of drill bits, I'm proud of myself, I haven't lost any out of this set yet. Um, little DeWalt set. Yeah, but you've only had it for a week. No way. Just I kidding. <laughs> um, I got this, this is kind of a multi-step bit. I had a bigger one, but I, that one did get lost. I'm not sure what happened to it. And then I got some paddle bits here um, for drilling larger holes that these things generally don't cover. Um, I don't think I covered these, but these are uh, metric or uh, yeah, met regular SAE and metric uh, hex key sockets. Uh, we ran into the problem on the bus where there were some pretty big sockets that a standard socket set doesn't cover. So I got these so I could really torque on them. And then I have a, a set of uh, Torx bits also. Um, I don't remember why. I think I've just had this. I had a, some thing I needed it for a long time ago, but I don't know what it was for. But we've kept it. So. And that's about it. Pretty so. impressive spread, my love. This might be, there's some overkill here for sure. Um, a lot of this, a lot of these tools here are covering, you know, overlapping into my hobbies and stuff for sure. And, uh, but um, with all the mechanic I've done, I, I really, the only time I had to go get a tool, two times. One was getting bigger wrenches, I needed bigger wrenches. And the second one was um, the uh, gear puller, which you're just not gonna need to get used very often. And you can rent those from like AutoZone or O'Reilly's or any of those places that rent tools. You can go in there and rent it, put a deposit down, take it home use it, bring it back, you get all your money back. So, yeah, it's, other than that, like, this is really, this base and some of the electrical stuff has covered us for everything so far on the road, knock on wood. <laughs> but yeah, you should just have, a, like, you gotta have at least the tools that you're comfortable using to get you through some of the harder times in uh, the bus life because you're gonna be driving down the road, there's gonna be maintenance issues, there's gonna be just like in a house. And it's a lot nicer when you're not paying somebody $80 an hour to do it, or $125 for a decent mechanic, or whatever it is now. Pray I don't ever have to meet one. Right. <laughs> so, but this is it. Now I get to put it all away, and that's gonna be a feat unto itself. Yeah, you're gonna burn your hands because it's all a thousand degrees out here in the Arizona sun right now. You might wait a little bit. Yeah, maybe cool till this evening. A lot of these tools are too hot to touch. If you guys have any questions about any of these tools or if there's something that you think I missed, uh, feel free to just ask a question in the comment. We'll try to get to those questions for you guys. I know there's a lot here and we didn't go into much detail on a lot of these tools. So, Well, that's about it for the tool episode. Come back and see us next week. I'm sure we'll be doing something interesting. At least I hope we will be. And uh, reach down here and click that subscribe button. And a thumbs up if you like the video. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm watching for you. <laughs> and uh, leave a comment say hi and we'll talk to you guys next we'll see you guys next week
Bye. 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 Bye.